Congratulations on the purchase of your whole house filter and salt-free water softener. The system works in three stages. The carbon filter will eliminate any contaminants such as chlorine. The sediment filter will eliminate any particulates. And the future soft tank, which is a salt-free water softener, will neutralize any remaining hardness. This video will walk you through the installation process. Your new system consists of the following parts. The carbon filter tank that's identified as CF+, the future soft tank that is identified as FS+, a 20-inch sediment filter housing, a sediment filter to place inside that housing, a spanner wrench, two hose bib assemblies, a gasket and lube, and a mounting bracket. Your system is compatible with PVC, copper, and PEX tubing. This video will feature an installation using PVC components. 48 hours prior to installation, the media in the tanks will need to be activated. This will be accomplished by filling the tanks with water. Also note that due to the weight of the tanks once they're filled with water, you will want to stage both of the tanks near the installation area and to perform these next steps there. This is also why you've been provided with two hose bib adapters. Please note that this step will be performed on both tanks. Thread one of the hose bib adapters into the inlet side, and then you will thread the other hose bib adapter into the outlet side of the tank. Go ahead and hand tighten for this step. Connect your garden hose from the spigot onto the inlet side of the tank. Connect another hose to the outlet side of the tank. The second hose will allow the water to run off away from your work area. The water to the spigot will then be turned on. Once you see water start exiting the other hose, you can go ahead and shut the water off to the spigot. The hoses and the hose bib adapters can now be removed from the CF Plus tank. Connect them to the FS Plus tank and repeat the process. Allow both tanks to sit for 48 hours to activate the media. The tanks will now need to be flushed after the media has been soaking for 48 hours. Once again, you will attach the hose bib adapters and attach the hose. You will be flushing water from the inlet out through the outlet. Run the water through the tank until it runs clear. Disconnect the incoming water supply from the inlet and reverse the connection so that the water is now running in the opposite direction. You will then once again run the water until it runs clear. Remove the hose and the hose bib adapters and perform this step on the other tank. The next steps in this video will feature the use of PVC pipes with slip connectors. Since the system is under pressure, you must use primer and cement when putting these connections together to avoid any type of leaks. And if you happen to be a DIYer, it's suggested to dry fit all of your pipe connections first and then glue them after you've got all of your cuts and connections made. The sediment filter housing will now need to be prepared. Begin by unscrewing the top. The gasket and lube will be contained within. The gasket will lay within a groove around the top of the sediment filter housing. Before installing the sediment filter, be sure to remove the plastic film that it was shipped in. The sediment filter will be placed within the sediment filter housing. There is a nipple on the inside of the sediment filter housing that the opening of the sediment filter will rest upon. When properly aligned, the sediment filter will sit inside of the sediment filter housing. Apply some of the provided lubricant to the O-ring. Use your finger to spread the lubricant evenly. The O-ring will then be flipped over and the lubricant will then be applied to the opposite side. The top of the sediment filter housing has an opening that will align with the opening on the sediment filter. There are also guides that will ensure that the sediment filter properly aligns when it's placed. Go ahead and place the lid and begin threading it onto the sediment filter housing. Tighten the lid as tight as possible by hand. Two threaded to slip adapters will now be placed. Plumber's tape will be required to prep the threads. One of the prepped adapters will now be threaded into one of the openings on the sediment filter housing. Tighten as much as possible by hand. A wrench will then be required to fully tighten the adapter to ensure that there are no leaks. This will then be repeated on the other side of the sediment filter housing. 
before mounting the sediment filter housing, you will want to identify the optimum level. The connections for the sediment filter housing should align with the connections on the tank. Use the level to ensure that the mount is straight and you will also aim to mount the sediment filter housing to a stud due to weight. Due to the width of the tanks, a wood block may be necessary to assist in aligning the sediment filter housing opening with the carbon filter tank. The mount for the sediment filter housing can then be aligned and the holes can be marked to be pre-drilled. A 3 16th drill bit can then be used to pre-drill the holes for the mount. Four of the provided bolts and washers can then be used to secure the sediment filter bracket to the wall. Before mounting, make note of the inlet and the outlet on the sediment filter housing to ensure that you're properly orienting it. Align the screw holes on the housing with the holes in the bracket and use the other four provided bolts to secure it in place. Since this system doesn't come with a bypass valve, one will need to be assembled to allow easy maintenance of the system. As a reminder, be sure that you shut off the water supply to the home before working with a pre-plumb. Start the bypass by installing a pair of elbows pointing straight upwards from the connections that are coming out from the pre-plumb. Two small pieces of PVC, about three inches in length, will then be inserted into each of those elbows. A pair of T-connectors will now be introduced and will be installed so that the openings are facing inwards towards one another. A length of PVC, about half the distance between the two T-connectors, will now be installed on one side. A PVC shutoff valve will then be installed on the end of that piece. Another length of PVC will be added to close the gap between the two T-connectors. Two more short pieces of PVC will now be inserted into the openings of the T-connectors that are facing upwards. A pair of elbows will then be added to both of these connections and installed so that they're facing outwards. Two more short pieces of PVC will then be inserted into those elbows. Adding a shutoff valve to each side will complete the assembly of the bypass valve. When the valves are positioned to turn the bypass off, water will flow freely through your system. If you switch the valves and turn on the bypass, water will only flow through the bypass and not through your system. This will allow for easy maintenance. You are now ready to install the carbon filter tank. Position the tank so that the outlet is facing towards the sediment filter housing. Water from the pre-plumb will be leading into the inlet side. A pair of threaded to slip connectors will need to be prepared by applying plumber's tape to the threads. The connector will then be threaded into one of the openings on the top of the carbon filter tank. A wrench will then be required to fully tighten the connection. Repeat this process to add a threaded connector to the opposite side of the carbon filter tank. Position the tank near the incoming water supply of the pre-plumb. The inlet side should be facing the incoming water supply and the outlet should be pointing towards the sediment filter housing. A length of PVC will now be added to start building the connection towards the inlet on the carbon filter tank. Add an elbow that's facing downwards, followed by a length of PVC to align with the opening on the carbon filter tank, which will be followed by another elbow. A length of PVC can then be cut to fill the gap between the elbow and the inlet of the carbon filter tank. Cut a length of PVC to fill the gap between the exit of the carbon filter tank and the inlet on the sediment filter housing. The Future Soft Tank will now be introduced. Prepare two threaded to slip adapters by applying plumber's tape to the threads. Like before, the connectors will be threaded into the inlet and the outlet of the future soft tank. Use a wrench to ensure that the connections are fully tightened. Position the tank on the other side of the sediment filter housing. The inlet on the future soft tank will be pointing towards the outlet on the sediment filter housing. A length of PVC will now be added by inserting it into the outlet of the sediment filter housing and then connecting it to the inlet on the future soft tank. A 
a length of PVC will now be added to the other side of the pre-plumb, connecting into the other shutoff valve. This will be followed by an elbow pointing downwards towards the future soft tank. And it will be followed by another length of PVC to bring the connections to align with the outlet on the future soft tank. Another elbow will be installed to point towards the outlet on the future soft tank, followed by a length of pipe to bridge the connection. With the system dry fit, you can now proceed with cementing all of your connections to ensure that there is no leaks. Use the provided spanner wrench to fully tighten the sediment filter housing in position to prevent any type of leak. The sediment filter housing bracket has an opening that will be used to store the spanner wrench. You are now ready to test the system. Before restoring water to the home, ensure that all of the shutoff valves are in the off position. Open the cold water all the way to a tub or shower. Water to the home can then be restored. With all the valves in the off position, you can check for leaks without flushing any water through the system. If no leaks are detected, go ahead and open the shutoff valve in the middle. Water will begin flowing through the bypass and into the home. Inspect the connections along the bypass to ensure that there are no leaks. If none are detected, go ahead and close the shutoff valve to the bypass. Go ahead and open the other two shutoff valves. This will allow water to begin flowing through your tank and through the sediment filter housing. You will now need to inspect the other connections for any leaks. Work your way down to check the connections to the carbon filter tank and then check the connections to the sediment filter housing and the housing itself for any type of leak. Proceed to check the connections to the future soft tank and then check the connections that are leading back into the home. Allow the water to continue to flush through your system for about 10 minutes. And note that it's normal to see a small amount of sediment during this process. Congratulations! The installation is now complete.